Hi everyone. Today I wanted to share with you a few things that I have learned about sleep. Oh wait, if you're here today just for makeup or hair, I invite you to look at my videos over there or go over to Empowered Grace. She has portrayed me in one of her videos. Sleep is one of those things that are vital for humans and animals alike. And in our case and in our age, sleep starts to bother us a little bit. We will start waking up in the middle of the night and not understanding why this weird sleeping pattern has developed. I have struggled with sleep and I had really bad sleeping habits which is something that I had developed myself. That's what psychologists call poor sleep hygiene. And that's when you just train yourself to wake up in the middle of the night and stay up and alert. It is also my opportunity to introduce Dr. Huberman as the authority in neuroscience that I follow. He shares the podcast on YouTube. I'll put the links down below. It's called the Huberman Lab. He is a neuroscientist from Stanford. He shares with us all the studies that are what he calls blue ribbon journals, valid, good, top of the line studies that are peered reviewed and all the good stuff. And also shares no cost solutions to a good night's sleep. You will hear lots of bits of his talks from YouTube and podcasts here on this talk. And of course, I wanna give credit to him. Most of the information I'm sharing today is fact-based and based on his talks. I'm here super uncomfortable in the corner of my bed with my dog right here snuggling against me. I don't think you guys can see that, but I love him and he keeps me warm. And you will see temperature also is something that affects your sleep. So why do we want to have a good night of sleep, right? Why do we need that? We need sleep for cell rejuvenation. If you get a good night of sleep, you will get bright skin. I wake up with my skin is brighter. I don't have as many breakouts. I don't have any dark circles under my eyes after a good night's sleep. It also helps me go through the day with a more steady heart rate because it's all connected. Lack of sleep or not having enough sleep affects the adrenaline that runs through your body. And what adrenaline does it runs to your heart and there are little channels in your heart tissue that will accept the adrenaline, and I, I call it an irritant, that will make your heart pump faster. If you get a good night's sleep, your adrenaline levels in your body are gonna be lower, you're gonna be more rested, and therefore your heart will be beating more regularly without the surges of adrenaline making it go super fast. So that was one of my number one thing that my cardiologist told me to do is get a good night's sleep. Later in this video, I will share with you a few things that I do, including things that my doctor told me to do that ease me into sleep and keep me asleep at night for a full night. Also, getting a good night of sleep, going through the, the cycles of sleep properly will give us a cleansing of the area of the brain where your memories are. And it will chop off the like the little, there are little bits and pieces of your day they get chopped off and it just becomes dirt into your brain. So at a certain cycle in your sleep, all the little bits and pieces of junk get washed off from your brain, therefore creating a cleaner, healthier brain for the next day. Also sleep helps with learning and long-term memory. Those are other super fun things, but I'm trying to focus on more of our well-being currently. So let's get back to the Huberman lectures. As far as sleep, sleep is governed by two forces. One is chemical and the other one is the circadian rhythm. So as far as the chemical ones, there's this adenosine 
and it causes sleep hunger. So in the morning, this molecule is full and replenished in your body. And as the day goes on, it starts getting used up. So you get sleepier and sleepier as the day goes on, what he calls sleep hunger. The other one is the circadian rhythm. A circadian rhythm would be something we can control. So circadian is related to the sun, the amount of sun you have in a day. And what he says, I'm going to go straight to the point, is that the best way to control your sleep as far as circadian is you get between two and 10 minutes of more morning light every morning as you wake up. There is a change in light. The blue light is being reduced and the red light is increasing right around that time of waking within one or two hours of waking that your eyes will see that change in light and send a message to your brain that you are awake and melatonin will be at its optimum level for sleep 11 to 14 hours after the sunlight has hit your pupils, your eyeballs. So that means that you can control or at least you can plan for a good sleep by starting that clock, the circadian clock, early on in the morning. So go outside first thing in the morning and I do before I even put my sunscreen on. When I'm drinking my coffee, I go outside, play with my plants, let my dog out and get that brightness in. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to stare at the sun. That's not what it means. It's just being outside, you get enough lux, which is the amount of light that will initiate that circle. So you may ask, do I need to go outside? Can I just go to a window? And the answer to that is yes, but you will have to stay in front of the window for 10 to 100 times longer than your two to 10 minutes. So the most efficient way is just go outside. You can also open the window maybe and look out from the window, but the fastest, most efficient way is just to go ahead and go outside for a couple minutes. You don't want too much light in the middle of the night because it will mess up that circadian circle. So between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m., you do not want a high amount of bright light. You don't want to turn your lights on when you go to the bathroom or if you wake up for whatever reason. Just keep things at the low. The amount of light is so significant that the moonlight, the amount of light coming from a fireplace, all of those are fine for you to stay asleep. But it is the bright intensity of your cell phone right there close to your eyes for an extended period of time or the amount of light coming from your overhead light for an extended period of time that will mess up that circadian rhythm. He also said to look at the evening light. So around four and five o'clock, of course it's different wherever you live, but at dusk when again, that change of a blue light to red light ratio is happening is a good time to go out there because at that time of night, it is balancing your sensitivity to light and will let you stay up for a few more hours until it's time to go to bed. All of this in neuroscience is just a way of training your body. We're human beings, we are animals and we have developed through millennia to have all these different patterns that benefit us. And what this exposure to light is, is just our prehistoric way of dealing with day length and time and when to go to sleep and when to wake up. So it's really interesting. And because of neuroplasticity, the ability to kind of change the way our neurons send messages and create new pathways that will create a new habit in our brain is a way to fix our sleep. So whether or not you want to learn how to play music or a new language or when to go to bed, it's all the same ideas. You're creating 
by using it and making it work for you new pathway like a new a new circuit of learning and doing and sleeping and doing and just going over and over the same pattern over and over again your brain is sending messages from neuron to neuron and creating this circle that is what learning is so again and again when you do it so many times the pathway becomes stronger and you automatically do that so that's how you can affect sleep and learning and all these different things so he talks about also that people are so worried there is actually a thing about being so anxious about sleep that you cannot sleep and another way to use neuroscience to fix that problem would be what is called non-sleep depressed i think he coined that phrase and that means that you were going putting yourself on a state of relaxation that would be the equivalent of that one zone of sleep that 90 minute cycle of sleep that would be beneficial to us and regenerative all he says that you have to do is if you are like this morning i woke up i had seven hours of sleep which was great yay but i was still feeling tired so i felt that i needed something else extra so what i did is i did yoga nidra which is a practice even though i have a really hard time meditating that is so difficult for me to think of meditating but what yoga nidra does it talks you through a relaxation exercise and it takes between 20 and 30 minutes yoga nidra will work for you as if you had taken a nap or slept but after studying it's a great idea to take a 20 minute nap so i was preparing for this and i decided okay i'm gonna do the yoga nidra now and what it does it helps you retain the information that you learned if you practice that non-sleep deep rest practice tw for 20 minutes after a 90 minute cycle of learning that's another cool thing i learned from huberman so what i did is i laid here in bed and i asked alexa you can find yoga nidra on your any just type in on your uh, youtube and somebody guide you through the meditation i used one of alexa's skills let's see if i can bring it back alexa give me a yoga nidra guided meditation you yoga nidra enabled do you want to open it yes come into a comfortable position lying on your back so see it's just a skill on alexa and i just sat over here and did it for about 20 minutes and felt so much more alert and ready to go again and that's a practice that you can do any time of the day when you're t feeling tired try to do that re relaxation and your brain will come back and be alert again and ready to go or you will feel rested and ready to learn and and deal with people <laughs> all that good stuff the same benefits that you would have had if you had slept your eight hour a night so don't worry if you can't get those eight hours in just fit in that nidra in now what we're trying to share here is ways for you to hopefully figure out how to go about your day with exercise supplementation um going out and getting sunlight in your eyes so that you can have a full night's sleep what about exercise how can we use exercise to help us sleep well one thing really cool that i learned from my cardiologist is that exercise should be used instead of drugs when it comes to uh, keeping your heart rate at a steady rate throughout the day and what exercise does is it uses up the adrenaline that you have so if you have no adrenaline you don't need a beta blocker because there is nothing to block so beta blockers are medicine are medicines that are used to 
block the channels that accept adrenaline in your body. So when you're exercising, you are burning off adrenaline. Therefore, the adrenaline wouldn't be hitting your heart and make it a bit beat faster. So you will make you a more relaxed person, period. So that would be great for sleep as well. What works for me as far as exercise is exercising not at high intensity a couple of hours before I go to bed. And Dr. Huberman says there are three best times of the day for exercise. One is 30 minutes after waking and that is because cortisol levels will go up at that time, which is a good thing for performance and prevent injury. So he says 30 minutes after waking, three hours after waking, and for that one, it's probably related to your body temperature, raising high enough that you will be good for uh, performance and prevention of injury. Or 11 hours after waking is when your body temperature is at its peak. So that is what works for me. My body temperature is nice and high, and at that time, I'm ready to go. I just will ride my recumbent bike for about an hour, and my cardiologist says all you need is 30 minutes, but I watch a show usually while I'm riding the bike, so that's perfect. And again, exercise uses up the adrenaline. I'll take a warm bath afterward and my body temperature quickly drops down after that. And that drop in temperature also will help you go to sleep. I do wanna tell you that both morning exercise and exposure to brightness have cumulative effects. So based on studies, you will be awake and better to face the day if you do those two things in the morning. To each his own. So I want to talk about now temperature rhythms and how they relate to the circadian cycle in our bodies. Our body temperature is at its lowest at about 4 a.m. and beginning at 6 a.m. it slowly starts to creep up and it peaks between 4 and 6 p.m. which is the time when I usually exercise. And even if light was not part of the equation, our body temperature naturally goes from lowest to highest, being lowest at 4 a.m. So if you want to extend the time that you stay awake you can exercise later in the day and push that time up of uh, having a higher temperature but one way to change that is what i do after i exercise i'm an evening exerciser so after i exercise i take a hot bath which will make my body cool quickly doing that my body goes into the mode of okay it's time to go to sleep also food will change the amount of heat in your body if you eat earlier in the evening then you will want to go to bed earlier and it will make you want to wake up earlier the following day also he talks about some people like to drink teas which is something i do specifically the teas that help sleep such as chamomile and uh, passion flower they are affecting the apigenin levels in your body and what that does is it shut down your thinking so that's pretty cool knowing that when you're taking chamomile tea it's shutting down your thinking therefore it's calming you down and there's a specific tea that I use. My husband was the one who directed me to this. It is this sleepy time called sleepy time extra. It has valerian in it. Valerian is used for relaxation and promotes calmness. I do not know the science behind valerian, but I would imagine that it works in conjunction with the chamomile and this tea. So this tea will have the chamomile, which will shut down thinking according to neuroscience. And then the valerian is what possibly keeps me asleep because this is a godsend. Drink it right before bed or right in bed while you're watching a show. You will be ready to fall asleep 
just like that. Um, at one time I used to take melatonin that had valerian in it and that was also fantastic. It would put me right on to sleep. However, melatonin is not something that Dr. Huberman recommends. I think because it affects some other hormones in your body. He advocates that we do self-experimentation because each one of us have different biology. We are made out differently. We have different receptors. Some people have mutations that receptors look different. Therefore, uh, caffeine won't work the same for me or you. Start just recording daily routines and see if that affects our sleep. And he says, these are the things that you need to keep in check. When and if you went outdoors that day, so the time of day and for how long so they say between two and ten minutes so see if you're going two minutes in the morning is long enough or do you need the whole full 10 minutes you know you can watch for that so you would do that and also put the time that you did in relation to waking sunlight put a check mark and two hours after awake or one hour or at the time of waking. For me, I always do it right when I wake up and let my dog out and I'll hang out outside for a little bit. Also, check when you feel cold throughout the day. It's a way of gauging whether or not your body is needing the sleep or rest. When do you usually exercise? Check on that. And how does that affect your sleep? Size are your morning 30 minutes after waking up? Are you a three hour after waking up? Or are you an evening 11 hour after you wake up exerciser also whether or not when you check that no sleep deep rest protocol if you did that were you able to wake up earlier the following day were you able to stay up and alert throughout the afternoon lull that some people have keep a journal with that and see if that helps your sleep at all on a long-term basis so don't make it a chore it's just something you do you go and you write and observe it for a month and see if your sleep has changed or if you're able to break away from your bad habits of sleeping one last thing that i wanted to give you as far as going to sleep at night my cardiologist said to take Tylenol PM and take two and go to sleep if I'm having a real bad time, hard time falling asleep. Now I haven't done that in months, maybe a year. I haven't needed to do that. But just be aware that Tylenol PM for me, it gave me constipation. So that's not something you want to do on a regular basis. So it's good to vary. One, try the lighting. I've been sleeping well for the past year. The only issue that I might find is I only sleep like six hours, which for me is mostly enough but then i will feel a need for a nap later in the day but instead of taking a nap i need to do my yoga nidra and see if that helps you keep your sleep pattern for the following night and your waking hours for the following day but if you really need to try the tea first just to get you relaxed if you absolutely have to Take the Tylenol PM. Of course, talk to your doctor if you have health concerns. But those are the things that have helped me break my bad habits. And if I do happen to wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and I'm wide awake for whatever reason, maybe I didn't eat well or I didn't go out and get sunlight or whatever it is that happened, and I decide to go watch YouTube, which is a no-no because then you're exposing yourself to those photons that will activate your, your cortisol and start the melatonin rush through or process don't do that but if I do decide to do that I don't care I know that I can take a nap later in the day I can do the yoga nera when I wake up or later in the day and I will bring myself back to normal sometimes you just can't help sometimes days are just stressful and it will affect your sleep so hopefully I offer today a few tools to manage that in a healthy 
low cost or no cost way. Thank you so much for joining me today. I don't know if y'all noticed, I put on my makeup and I made the bed throughout the video. <laughs> it just makes me feel better. My next video will probably be about candles or decorating a nook. So put your vote down below if you want the decorating the nook first or a candle review. I already have these candles. Some of them are here already and oh my gosh, they're so good. All right, guys, have a good one. See you next time. If you are new to my channel, I would welcome you to stick around. So stick around.